Hello and welcome to another tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to create and animate fairy lights or decorative Christmas lights. In order to keep the tutorial short and interesting, I have tried to go over important points and steps that you can follow to do something like this without going into much details. To get started, first create a helix spline. This will be the wire on which the lights will be attached later on. I have set these parameters for the helix and it should look like this. You can create a straight wire too or wire wrapped around a tree if you want. The next step is to add an FDD 4x4x4 modifier. Change the position of control points randomly to alter the shape of the wire as it can't ever be a perfect circle. Next, add my favorite noise modifier. Decrease the scale and increase the X and Y values. The wire should look pretty messy like this. To fix these weird sharp corners, add an Edit Spline modifier next. Choose the vertex selection type and move the vertex around in the wire to fix these sharp corners. This can take a bit of time. If you don't want to go over this process of correcting the corners, lower the X and Y values in the previous noise modifier. That way, the wire will not have these strange pointy corners. I just want to show you a way to fix this in case you have this issue. You can also move the vertex downwards as I have done here to give an effect of gravity on the wire. You can spend a lot of time in this step to refine the wire, however even after few minutes, the results will be convincing. After this, apply an Edit Poly modifier. Choose Edge Selection Type and after holding down Ctrl plus Shift, select two adjacent edges. This will select a line of edges. Choose Create Shape with the Smooth option checked. Now you will have another better looking wire. You can hide or delete the original one. If required, you can still fix any issues in the wire to improve the overall aesthetics. With the wire completed, now we will create the lights. For that we will use a cylinder. Make sure its radius is equal to the radius of the wire for convincing effect. Again to save time, I am creating a very basic representation of the light. You can spend a lot more time on it to model the light if you want. These are the values that I will be going with. Now using Edit Poly, divide the light into two parts. The top part will actually be the light bit, which will be illuminated, and the bottom will be the wire. Also detach the top part and make it a separate object. Choose the same color or material for the bottom part and the wire, since they are the same. Rename the light part as Light Group A, as that would be useful later on. Link the top part with the bottom, so it moves around as one. Also rotate the light 90 degrees along Y axis. Now using Path Constraint, constraint the light to move on the wire. In the Path Parameters, check the Follow option and set the axis to Y. The movement is too fast, so in the Time Configuration setting, set the End Frame to 500. Then move the last keyframe from 100 to 500 to slow down the movement. The light is very straight at the moment, however it should bend down a little owing to the effect of gravity. To do that, turn on the Auto key and rotate the light downwards at certain points in the timeline. Go through the timeline and alter the rotation of the light to introduce a bit of randomness. However, at the end the light should not be rotated downwards as it will clip through the ground. Now 
Now in order to make copies of this light along the wire, first group the two parts of the light. Then with the group selected, use the snapshot tool in the tools menu. Use the range option and as far as the number of copies is concerned, it is a trial and error process. The number of copies should be such that the distance between the two lights should not be very large. With the copies made, the original group would still be selected. Ungroup it and select the bottom part. Turn on the auto key and position the slider at zero. Then increase the percentage along path, such that this light lies in the middle of the two other lights. Also check the flip option this time. Once that is done, increase the percentage along path at the last keyframe by the same amount as well so that it starts and ends at the same point. Now rename the top portion of the light as Light Group B. Group the two parts and make copies using the same method as before. My potato laptop is struggling at this point, reminding me to invest in a new one. Anyway, select all the objects, ungroup and unlink them. Now we will create actual lights to illuminate the scene. But before that, select all the objects with names Light Group A and Light Group B. And move their pivot points to their respective centers. You can use any spherical lights. I will use Omni as that is the most common. Set its range to the desired amount. I want the light to blink or alternate between the two groups, meaning if the lights on the group A turns on, then the lights at group B should be off and vice versa. For this, first we need to animate the light blinking, so turn on the auto key, and at the frame 0, set the multiplier to 0. Then move the slider to 10 and set the multiplier to 1. Then set the slider to 15 and keep the multiplier at 1 since you want the light to be on for a few microseconds. Then at frame 25, set the multiplier back to 0. In order to loop it, open the curve editor in the graph editors menu. Select the multiplier option and open the out of range types window in the controller menu. Check the loop option both way. Now create a copy of the light and move the keyframes a bit ahead just to alternate the two lights to make things interesting. Now to copy and position these lights, we will use the clone and align tool. Pick all the objects with the name Light Group A. The object should be set to instance. If nothing happens, uncheck and then check the link to destination option. It will instantly copy and align those lights. Now repeat the process for the second light, and this time pick the objects with the name Light Group B. We are done now. You can change the animation on the original two lights and since the rest of them are instances of the original, they will have the same animation. So you can easily create different effects with the light. Here is a quick render of what we have made today. I have tweaked the light's animation a little so that they blink alternatively. As mentioned, this was just a quick example of how you can create something like this. Of course, you can spend a lot of time here in modeling the lights and fine-tuning the animation and light effects. But even with a minimum effort, the results are really good as you can see here. I hope you find this tutorial useful. I upload tutorials on a number of different subjects on a regular basis, so stick around by subscribing. This channel will teach you different random things and is a nice companion to have. Thank you for watching.